It's a 1923 uh, Packard Single Six Roadster. Uh, they called them Single Six because there was another model out which they called the Twin Six. I, uh, I had a friend who, um, who told me about it and uh, I was reluctant to buy it actually because um, I had uh, three other studio bakers that needed uh, maintaining and one needed finishing off and I was very busy doing that and, uh, and having another car, well, um, it was a matter of uh, my wife come along and forced me to buy it. Uh, the first objective was to strip it down, see what parts I had, and more important, what parts I, I was missing. And then um, I started uh, doing some chassis work first, which was completely stripped, and then um, uh, doing mudguard work, mudguard repairs, and. Um, and the bonnet, I concentrated on that. That was uh, at TAFE, at New South Wales TAFE, uh, in various uh, TAFEs uh, through New South Wales I went to. And um, then I had to start on the uh, rear section. The, the actual body from the, um, the cowl back didn't exist. There was no body, no doors, no roof, no hood irons, no nothing. And I had to make all that door skins, uh, roll them up, rolled them up at TAFE using the English wheel. Um, the dicky suit lid was another um, English wheel exercise of rolling the metal, getting shaped both ways. And then um, actually I had to make it twice. The tech teacher rejected the first one. He says it was not up to standard. So then I had to make another one, which, uh, which I did. And then um, continued on on the rear guards. The rear guards had to be altered because it, I decided on a roadster and the rear guards were actually from a tourer so they had to be widened to accept the um, roadster where the roadster body comes in and tapers in the uh, guards had to be widened so more patch panels and more welding and more uh, hammering and dollying <laughs> and uh, panel beating and unbelievable amount of work on, on it I had to do. I had to put Tassie Oak timber inside it um, and it was a matter of just, I knew that what the shape was because the, the metal skin determined the shape. So then I had to put the uh, Tassie Oak in, all my mortise and tenon joints, like Packard used to do. Uh, Studio Baker and Packard did uh, mortise and tenon joints uh, and the cheaper models like English cars and stuff, they used halving joints, whereas uh, quality stuff had the mortise and tenon. So all that had to be made and fitted and then um, including um, uh, door frames so the new skin could go on the new door frame and uh, that was the timber work done. Then um, it was a, what did I start on then? I had to make some um, hood irons and uh, make uh, anchors. I had to make anchors for the hood irons and then um, 
uh, actually make the hood irons themselves with the tapered tubes and all the fittings on them had to be all made. Um, I got a guy in Sydney to make the actual tubes and then I had to make all the ends and fit it all together and work out how it all collapsed and opened up and collapsed and I had to experiment how that all worked because I hadn't a clue <laughs> and uh, finally got uh, a couple of sets uh, that worked okay and then fitted them on and then um, I had to uh, get some um, the, um, the timber bows had to be uh, steam bent I, I found an old, uh, an old chap that still did it and uh, he had one set left and and after that he'd retired, but he had one set left, so I went and saw him. And then, um, luckily, they, they were the right size. And, uh, yeah, they were, yeah, then fitted... Those the ribs for the roof? Yes. Yeah. yeah, all steam bent, all originally how they used to do it in the old days. Whereas nowadays, um, steam bending is out the door and they just laminate it. You know, laminate the timber to form that um, U-shape. Well, the engine was was actually stripped by the previous owner, and I'd uh, and then I uh, checked it all and realised that she was in pretty sad state. So I had to um, get new bearings um, poured. They were the old bearings from the old days where they had the the bronze backings, and then the white metal poured into them. Then it has to be line bored. Uh, to uh, a new ground up crankshaft, new cleaned up crankshaft, uh, which was all scored and, and rusted and pretty pretty buggered. And um, then um, uh, new, new pistons had to be ordered from Eggy in the uh, US. And then um, uh, new valves, uh, new valves uh, had to be done. The head and block skimmed. All that was done by Peak Rebores in Sydney. And, um, well, then it was basically a matter of putting it all together and crossing my fingers. <laughs> and uh, so the, Tell me about the first time you started up the engine. Well, uh, I hadn't a clue what to do. What, what actually happened was the, the, the Packard has a, a funny looking um, carburetor and hooked to that as a funny looking choke. And I didn't know uh, what what sort of setting the choke was, what what setting the choke was to set at, and uh, I just based it on um, what they did with the studio breaker, where you pull the choke right out and you give it a, a gut full of fuel, and then um, it fires instantly. But Packard didn't; there was petrol running everywhere. <laughs> I just flooded it so bad, so I had to clean it all up and wait for it to evaporate a bit, and. Uh, then I uh, thought, well, maybe a little bit of choke, and finally, boom, she fired. Now tell me about the electrical work. Oh, well, I had to do all the electrics. That was all the uh, original cotton braided wiring that they used, so I just had to... Um, had to... Um, well, I'll reproduce all that. Uh, I had the wiring uh, diagram, so I followed the wiring diagrams from the um, instruction booklet. And uh, Packard were pretty thorough because they even told you the length of each wire. The wheels, uh, the wheels were a bit of a disaster area. They were, um, they were totally rubbish. Uh, I had to get the uh, rims rolled up. 24-inch uh, uh, rims were rolled up by a guy in Queensland, and then. Um, they had to be then um, dimpled and um, spokes had to be made and the rims dimpled and then all fitted. They had to then fit the spokes to the, um, to the rims, which was done by um, Gary Phillips in the, at the Central Coast. He makes, uh, makes all that. And uh, all to my, my old hubs, my old hubs he had to use. And then uh, there we go, five new wheels cost a fortune but they're all new. <laughs> I had to make the steering wheel that's easily made out of uh, walnut. You just make a, you do a, um, a two-piece a two hexagon and then um, 
you have to then um, rotate it to stagger the joints and then glue it together and then from that section you then cut out your steering wheel with a band saw or jigsaw, it doesn't matter, and then get your spoke shave out and round all the corners off to make it a circular or an oval shape and then you've got to work out your finger grips, how many there were, so you just study all the old Packard magazines and magnifying glass and count how many finger grips they had on the steering wheel and then transfer that to yours, mark it out and then get a round file and file all the finger grips in and of course then sand it all nicely and then French polish it, one steering wheel. Right. Yeah. And also uh, I had to do the, the dash, had to match the steering wheel colour, so I had to um, wood grain the dashboard, um, which I did, which was quite easy. You just use your big goose feather and you put your, your base coat down, which is just like a light brown colour, and then you put your toner down, your darker, your darker um, brown, and then all you do is then run the goose feather through the the um, the darker paint and then you you'll see that actually if you look at a feather you'll see the grain in it and when you run that through paint that sort of works in such a way as you get a really nice grain and you can buggerise around with a feather like stop and start and wave it about and swirl it and twirl it and, and that. The instruments weren't too bad. Um, I took them to a um, an instrument chap that I know who's now retired also and uh, he just checked them over and uh, cleaned them up a bit and uh, touched them up a little and they're all good, they're in, in marvellous condition. Tell me about the uh, work you did on the upholstery. Uh, well, um, this, uh, this work is the first time I ever attempted uh, to uh, do motor trimming. Um, I've never sewn with a sewing machine ever in my life and uh, I was at a stage where I needed to get a motor trimmer to do the work and I just couldn't afford the, the cost of that and uh, one of my friends came to my shed and says oh I have an industrial sewing machine that you can have for nothing uh, uh, you're welcome to it so well I had to um, then um, had to uh, make a table for it and uh, mount the actual sewing machine and again uh, make a pedal and all the understructure so after doing that I had a working sewing machine and then uh, bought some leather and bought some uh, top material and uh, started sewing and uh, well I practiced on a lot of vinyl first not uh, destroying any uh, any hides because uh, it's quite expensive. I bought four hides from Botany Leather and uh, after getting some confidence in sewing straight uh, I uh, then uh, attempted uh, small pieces, small sections first and gained confidence and uh, then uh, uh, tackled um, first of all the, uh, the actual seat manufacture that has to be made on a ply base you have to um, uh, attach um, the uh, metal coils for inside the, the metal springs inside the seat then you cover it with foam calico foam and um, hog rings and staples and madly uh, make seats and then uh, I had to do the, the roof which was uh, a lot of trial and error but I eventually got there um, yeah and uh, I think it came out quite well well, uh, yeah, that's sort of our first um, long trip uh, from um, from Connell Park to Terrigal, and uh, well, we uh, I decided to go the old highway. We arrived uh, at uh, Edelong, no problem. Just car went perfect. They had a, a voting system where they had a people's choice, and uh, there was I think uh, about five judges which walked around and. Uh, uh, judge the cars and then uh, um, after that well it was a, a matter of I uh, clean sweeped it I won uh, 
the um, the the what do they call it the pre pre war class. I won the pre war class. I won the um, the two uh, perpetual trophies, the Bert Needham Trophy and um, the President's Trophy, and then the the um, the People's Choice. That was number one also. So. I think that was the only time in the club's history that that's ever happened. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah.